Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Stable Diffusion 3 video. So today in this video, we're going to dive deep into the world of Stable Diffusion 3, talk about its prompting techniques, the formula to write amazing prompts in Stable Diffusion 3, and also we're going to discuss all the use cases in Stable Diffusion 3, which would include human portraits, realistic images, landscapes, typography, anime characters, and abstract. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into this Stable Diffusion 3 review and discuss all the use cases of this amazing new image generator. Alright guys, so here I am in my comfy UI of Stable Diffusion 3 and right off the bat you guys can see I have some kind of a very complex workflow in which I get the load models so I can go ahead and choose between my parameters. Then I have my input section in which I can go ahead and choose my seed. I can choose my latent image, I can input my prompt and negative prompt and after that I have few more parameters which are really important. So the most important in that is this case sampler, okay, in which I can go ahead and choose my steps, uh, my CFG values, sampler name, scheduler and denoise, okay, and then I have my output in which I'll be getting my final image after I queued my prompt, okay. So this is the kind of interface we get in Comfy UI for our Stable Diffusion 3, okay. So if you guys are wondering how I went ahead and downloaded Stable Diffusion locally on my system, so for that, you can definitely check out my previous video on the channel of Stable Diffusion 3. Alright, so today I'm going to be testing out Stable Diffusion 3 in detail and I'm going to be doing all the use cases that you can possibly do in Stable Diffusion 3, which will include human realistic portraits, realistic images, landscapes, typography, anime characters, abstracts, and all those important things. So yeah. Without further ado, let's just jump right into this detailed testing. Okay, so before starting the testing, it is really important, first of all, to acknowledge the prompt formula for the new Stable Diffusion 3, all right? So for that, I went ahead and found a very good article online about Stable Diffusion 3, all its prompt guides, all its settings, and everything. And from here, I basically went ahead and chose a prompt went to chat GPT, type in my prompt and then write me prompt just like that by following the same exact prompt formula for all of these things. So it basically generated all the prompts for my topics which were human realistic portraits, realistic images and all those things that I just told you. And after that, it basically went ahead and derived me the prompt formula for all the use cases as well, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, now here is basically the list of all the prompt formulas that you can be required for, you know, most of the use cases uh, that you can possibly do. So we have human realistic portraits, realistic images, landscapes, typography, anime character, abstracts, okay? So you have all the prompt formulas for all of your use cases right over here, okay? Okay, so now let's just go ahead and talk about parameters uh, in Stable Diffusion 3. So according to myself, according to my testing, uh, there are just a few of the parameters that you should keep in your mind, which include these case samplers. So we have steps, uh, then we have CFG, sampler name. So for sampler name, uh, you should be on DPMPP2M. For scheduler, you should be on SGM Uniform. Because you know, you can go ahead and found it online on various places. If you can take a look at these articles, so you're saying for the settings, the best one you can have is 28 steps, 3.5 to 4.5 CFG, DPMM2. M sampler with the STM uniform scheduler and 3.0 shift, okay? So I went ahead and adapted all of these settings in my case sampler and believe me guys, these were the perfect settings. I got the perfect results from these settings, okay? So yeah, now we have the 28 steps, 4.0 CFG, which is absolutely perfect. And now let's just go ahead and input our first prompt over here and see how well it performs with these parameters, okay? Okay, so I'm going to make this uh, workflow a bit small so that it can fit into my frame. Okay, so I'm going to do that and now I'm going to zoom in a bit. All right, this looks perfect. Okay, so now everything is visible. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and input our first prompt into this text encoder prompt. Okay, so the first of all, we have a close-up half portrait photo of a man wearing a crisp white shirt with rolled up sleeves and a leather bracelet, has short curly brown hair, a well-trimmed beard. He is standing in front of a rustic wooden door in an Italian countryside just before sunset golden hour, okay? So now, first of all, uh, we're going to ignore the negative prompt. Then I'm going to tell you how much the negative prompt holds the importance in Stable Diffusion 3 as well. According to my testing, because, you know, in blogs and somewhere, people say negative prompts are not as much important. But yeah, it is really important. I'm just going to show you in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to queue this prompt first of all. 
All right, so here is the result. You can see we have a close-up half portrait photo of a man wearing a crisp white shirt. So you guys can see uh, we have a bit of a deformation. We are seeing an extra arm right over here. Other than that, the lighting, everything looks pretty decent. The photo is really, really good. But yeah, we have a bit of a deformation and it's really annoying me at the moment. But now if I go ahead and type in my negative prompt that, uh, you know, I don't want to see multiple arms. Okay, so I'm going to just write over here multiple arms okay so this is just gonna be my negative prompt and if i go ahead and cue my prompt so yeah take a look at this difference right so our multiple arm like deformation is removed and now we have a perfect image of a half close-up portrait of a man wearing a crisp white shirt with a rolled up sleeves and everything is perfect you know, the lighting the sunlight uh, the wooden background, everything is to the point. Just by putting a negative prompt, now a problem of multiple arms is removed. So this is how the negative prompt holds the importance uh, in stable diffusion tree, okay? So yeah, now jumping into our negative prompt, I have a very amazing universal negative prompt for you guys, which is right over here, you guys can see. So yeah, over here, uh, I have basically included everything you can go ahead and want to get rid of in your images. So we have poorly rendered face, poorly drawn face, facial details. So this will be basically for every possible use case, whether it's human portraits, realistic images, animes, typography. So this will be very important. So I'm simply gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it into my negative prompt right over here, okay? So yeah, this will basically resolve all the deformation, all the problems in our images from now on, okay? So yeah, now first of all, let's just go ahead and do some human portraits for our use cases in Stable Diffusion 3. So our first example was this close-up half portrait photo of a man and the image turned out really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and download this image, right click and click on save image, okay? All right, so it's saved. Then for my next example, I'm gonna type in my prompt that a close-up half portrait photo of a woman wearing a traditional Indian sari uh, with intricate gold embroidery, uh, has long wavy black hair. So this will be a portrait of an Indian girl. All right, looks interesting. I'm gonna just cue my prompt with all my same parameters. These are the perfect parameters for stable diffusion for you guys. Just note it down and copy them with you, okay? All right, so within seconds, our photo is generated. And yeah, this looks really, really good. Just, um, I think there's a bit of a little too detail in the face. We can fix that very easily. I'm going to just decrease my CFG value. We'll keep on, you know, varying the value of CG from 3.5 to 4.5. So I'm going to take this uh, to 3.6. Hue my prompt once again. All right, well, now this looks really, really good. We don't have, uh, you know, any extra exposure in the details of the face. And yeah, there's no deformation because, uh, you know, courtesy of our negative prompt right over here. Everything looks good, top notch to the point. I'm gonna go ahead and save this image as well, all right? Okay, now let's just go ahead and move to our next use case, which is gonna be realistic images. So for that, first of all, I'm gonna type in my prompt that a high resolution image of a sleek red sports car parked on a rainy soaked city street. The car has a matte finish with black racing stripes in the background are traveling the skyscrapers and all the details. All right, now let's just go ahead and do our CFG value uh, as it was like 4.0 because that is a perfect one according to me. Click on the Q prompt and let's wait for that. All right, you guys, here you go. Take a look at this image as well. This looks really, really good, like stable diffusion 3. Take a look at the shadow uh, in the rainy ground, right? And the detail in the image, the red color, the car detail, the background exposure, everything looks top notch, okay? And if I go ahead and decrease the CFG value, because I don't want like that sharp detail, so I'm gonna do 3.6 again, Q prom once again. Okay, wow, now this looks perfect, right? Everything is top notch, we don't have like extra exposure in the background. And I think this all uh, is because of my negative prompt or what, but the images are really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and save it once again with me, okay? All right, next, let's just go ahead and do one more example for a realistic image. And this time, I'm going to say a high-resolution image of a golden retriever puppy sitting on a lush green lawn. Uh, the puppy has a playful expression on all the details. And yeah, for uh, the realistic images, I think the 3.6 CFD value is perfect. I'm going to cue my prompt simply and see how it's turned out. All right, wow, this looks absolutely perfect. Very, very realistic. Just, I think we have 
a very much uh, lighting of the sunlight on the puppy. But other than that, I think it looks good. Let's just decrease our CFG value to 0.3%. Uh, QR problem once again. Um, yeah, I think this looks much better. Just, I think, a bit of a deformation in the eye. I'm going to increase my CFG value this time to 4.0. And let's see how it's going to turn out now. Okay, wow, just like that. Uh, other than the extra exposure, I think it's extra sunny out there or what? But yeah, the image looks really, really good. Just to have to, you know, vary your CFG value. You have to keep on changing that until you get the perfect output, okay? So yeah, this looks good to me. I'm going to save this image to me, all right? All right, so next, let's just go ahead and jump to our next use case, which is landscapes. So for that, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and type in my prompt that a wide angle photo of a vast desert landscape with towering red sandstone formations. The ground is covered in fine red sand with sparse desert vegetation and all the detail. Let's just cue the prompt and see the results straight away, okay? All right, here we go. Here is our landscape, really, really realistic because, you know, Stable Diffusion 3 focuses on more realistic images for now. Everything looks really, really good in that uh, we have wide angle photo of a vast desert landscape with towering red sandstone formations. And we have fine red sand uh, with sparse desert vegetation. All the details yet yeah, looks really, really good. Okay, now let's just go ahead and move to our next form for our landscape, which this time is going to be a panoramic photo of a snowy mountain range with jacked peaks. The foreground features a crystal clear lake reflecting the mountains surrounded by a forest of tall pine trees and all the details. Let's just cue the prompt and see our image, okay? All right, wow, this looks really, really good. Take a look at the reflection in the lake and the snowy mountain range with jagged peaks are uh, the foreground features everything looks really really good top notch let's just go ahead and decrease uh the cmd value i'm not sure about the exposure uh, let's just do that okay this looks much better now i'm very much pleased with that i'm gonna save it okay okay now let's just go ahead and jump to the most important category of stable diffusion 3 which uh the stable diffusion 3 emphasizes much of its focus that is typography okay so now we're gonna go ahead and see how the typography in your images have been improved with the new stable division 3. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and type in my first prompt that a high resolution image of a vintage typographic poster. The text is written in bold, retro style, font with distress, texture, and all the, and you know, uh, the typography in that is gonna be adventure awaits, okay? So this is written in double inverted commas. So I'm gonna cue the prompt. Let's just see how uh, the typography is gonna turn out. All right, absolutely perfect, right, you guys? No spelling mistakes, no whatsoever. We have Adventure Awaits on the perfect vintage typographic poster. The text is written in bold. You guys can see a retro style and font is really, really good. So yeah, typography has been really good with Stable Division 3, no typo whatsoever. I'm going to download this. Okay, now let's just go ahead and move to our uh, next prompt for typography. Okay, so this time I'm going to write a high resolution image of a vintage neon sign with retro lettering. And the typography is that in that is going to be open 24 hours. Okay, let's just cue this and see how it goes. All right, here we go. So yeah, now we have a little bit of a typo in that we have O P double E N 24 and 20 hours written right over here. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and do a couple more steps in that play with the parameters until we get the perfect result okay all right so we have 24 hours done just we have double e in that so i'm gonna type in my negative prompt that o p e e n okay let's just see how it's gonna turn out now all right um so we have a bit of a more deformation into that let's just do this once again all right yeah so you guys can see uh open is done 24 hours yeah so you can go ahead and basically play around with that until you get the perfect result. But you know, the most important thing is that typography has really, really been improved in Stable Diffusion 3 now, okay? Okay, so now let's just go ahead and jump to our last category of anime characters. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and type in my prompt that a detailed half-body drawing of an anime girl with long lavender hair and cat ears. She is wearing a futuristic silver and purple armor with neon accents. Her eyes are large and turquoise with a hint of mischievousness and all the details. Let's just cue this prompt and see how it goes. All right, take a look at this anime photo, you guys. This looks really, really good to the point. We have a detailed half-body drawing of an anime girl with long lavender hair and cat ears. Yeah, looks really, really good to the point, okay? Okay, let's do one more example for our anime. So I'm going to type in my prompt that 
a detailed half body drawing of an anime boy this time. Okay, let's just cue this and see how it goes. All right, so take a look at this. This looks absolutely perfect. We have a half body drawing of an anime boy with spiky black hair and red eyes. He's wearing a black school uniform. So yeah, everything is to the point. We have no deformation whatsoever. So yeah, for anime characters, uh, stable division three is a really good choice as well. Okay. Okay, and now we have one last uh, example or use case for you guys. So yeah, we're going to be testing out how Stable Diffusion 3 is going to perform in abstract. So for that, I'm going to type in my prompt that a vibrant digital painting of an abstract shape featuring bold geometric patterns and shades of red, orange, and purple. And yep, we have very much colors into that. So let's just go ahead and see how it performs in abstracts. So I'm really much excited for this one. All right, here we go. So it turned out with this kind of an image. I'm not sure about this one. Let's just go ahead and do one more example for abstract. Okay, so this time I'm going to say uh, a colorful digital painting of an abstract landscape, swirling blues and greens blend to form a sense of flowing water. Let's just go ahead and see how this one turns out. All right, this looks interesting. So we have a digital painting of an abstract landscape. Um, swirling blues and greens blend to form a sense of flowing water with hints of gold and white, suggesting light and reflections. So yeah, for abstract, stable diffusion tree is not a bad choice either, okay? So there you go, guys. This was a review for uh, the new stable diffusion tree. We talked about prompts, negative prompts, important parameters. We talked about all of the use cases that you can possibly do in the new stable diffusion tree. So yeah, I hope you like this video, guys. And if you want to go ahead and see more of the videos on Stable Division 3, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.